Hey, what's up guys? This is Joe here, and welcome back to the third tutorial. Uh, today we are going to add some features to our plugin. So currently we have this checkbox, which doesn't do anything, and we have this color picker, which also doesn't do anything other than let you pick a color. And we're going to give these two things some functionality, and uh, maybe add a button, but that might be the next tutorial. We'll get, we'll see how far we're doing with time when we get to the end of that, and see where we got to go. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to delete that, close this down. Okay, so back into C++ in Visual Studio. I'm down here in the render function, so if you twirl this down, click on render, it should bring you right down to this render function here. Uh, we will go through this in probably some detail later on, but at the moment, all we need to do is add a couple of uh, variables. Like, we need to get some values for as variables. So first we need to make those variables. We're going to go over to tutorial tutorial.header. And in the type def struct, we may have already done this. I can't remember where I left off. I did a little bit of stuff um, since since we turned it off, but we'll see. Uh, so I have int, int, all caps. Notice that it's in this light blue color, the light green. Um, that is After Effects version of integer. Uh, you can also type in lowercase int, and it turns blue. That's uh, C++'s version or Visual Studio's version of it. Uh, they should pretty much be the same thing, but I'm going to stick as much as I can with the Adobe version of stuff. So I did all capital INT. I named it checkbox value. So this is going to either be a zero or a one. Zero is off. One is on. And so this is going to be a uh, variable that we're going to store. We're going to get that in a second. Uh, and I'll show you how to access this. And then also we're going to need to make this PF pixel eight, which is uh, a color pixel, an 8-bit color pixel. So that's going to hold the values of red, green, blue, and alpha. And I'm going to just call it color num. And so those are the only two variables we're going to need for now. And I'll show you how we can access those from the UI in After Effects. So let me hop over to After Effects for a second here. Um, the way we get access to this 50 here, for instance, if we go back to Visual Studio, if I go to my C++ uh, page and come over here, twirl this little thing down, and go to Render, you will see that they have a GIP dot gain F params tutorial gain U at what is all this, right? Okay, well, let's go through this a little bit at a time. The GIP, G, uh, small GI, capital P, is this variable here, which is referencing some kind of gain info. And if we go back to tutorial header, the type def structure that we made, has it's for gain info. So this is accessing all of this uh, structure here, everything that we have, all these variables, we're able to access those through that GIP variable that Adobe made. We can change this to whatever we want. It doesn't have to be GIP. We could call it monkeys if we want to, right? You can call it monkeys and it should turn blue, but now you're going to have all these errors because they use GIP all over the place. So for the sake of this, we're just going to leave it as GIP for now. Um, so if we go down here, we have, we typed in our GIP, so that accesses that variable. Now we can start accessing the I'm sorry, that accesses that structure type, and now we can access the variables inside of it. So if you hit GIP dot, and then it gives you access to those variables. So we have the checkbox value, color number, and gain F, which is a, a float value for, for this right here. This is the uh, that float var variable. From here, if we type, uh, we're going to get access to this checkbox value because we want to know what it is, or we want to actually, we want to know where we're going to get the value from. And in our case, when we go back to After Effects, we're getting the value of whether or not this box is checked. So this will be one, this will be zero. This is one, this is zero. So how do we, how we're going to access that? We need to make this equal something. Um, and we're going to call, we're going to call for params, which is a variable up here at the top that it's actually, this render function is taken in from somewhere else. That is going to need to be declared inside of brackets, braces. I think these are called braces. Um, and that variable, so this one in GIP, the gain float value, they got it from a variable called uh, tutorial gain. So if we go back to our header file, we go up here to this enumerate function. The tutorial gain is the first one in After Effects. So you have gain picker checkbox. Over here you have gain color checkbox. Okay, so this is taking that first, the first input that's available and making that the variable. So for us, our first input that's available is this float. So when we go back to our CPP file, go down to this render, uh, that's where they're getting this tutorial gain from. And so for ours, with our checkbox, we made another variable too called tutorial checkbox. So I'm going to grab this, come over to these brackets, 
paste that in there. We don't want that comma, and I'm gonna get rid of that space just for cleanliness. And then from here, if you hit dot, now we need to, some kind of way, access the value of whether or not this box is checked, okay? So in order to do that, we need to make something called a union. So when you hit dot, you have all these options here. You have flags, names, parameters, whatever. We want the U, that stands for union, param def union. Um, I don't really know what that is at the moment, but just know that you need it. Then you hit dot again, and that's going to bring up this list of random letters. Looks like random letters together. These all stand for something, and it depends on which type of parameter you're accessing. So for instance, in the gain, they're accessing a float slider definition. Okay, so that's what that's what this thing is. It's called a float slider, and they need to define it, so it's a float slider definition. And if you see, they have SF, FS underscore D. So if I were to go here, hit period, and type in F, it'll bring up FD and FS. FD is a fixed slider definition, and FS is a float slider definition. So that's why they use that one up there. We are going to use, uh, what do we got, a checkbox? I believe that is BD. I don't know where some of these letters came from. Some of them don't make sense. Some of them make fine, uh, fine sense. So for instance, we have AD, which stands for angle definition. That is if you're making a rotator angle, like for a drop shadow, that's what you'd use as the angle definition. Arbitrary, again, I don't really know what that arbitrary is or how to use it, but that's what you would use to define it as the arbitrary definition. Um, button definition, you ha this is what we're, we're gonna use in a little bit when we make a button. And you can go through these, and I'm all I'm doing is reading on the side here. Uh, CD is color definition, FD is a fixed slider, and you can just go down this list if you want to and see what else is in there. Uh, we need the BD which is checkbox definition. So I'm gonna go with that one. And then, uh, and again, the reason I chose checkbox definition is because we have a checkbox and that's the value we're trying to get of checkbox. And then finally you hit P and the last thing we need access to is the value of it. So we have a union dot checkbox definition dot value. So that is gonna tell us, that's gonna bring into After Effects when somebody clicks that, is this a one or is it a zero? Is it on or is it off? So here, we're gonna hit the semicolon, and the other variable we need to get, um, the other parameter we need to get access to is a small GIP again, because we wanna access that gain info again. We're gonna hit dot, and that is gonna give us access to this color num value that we made. So when we hit enter, this is gonna give us access to what value we pick when we use this little eyedropper. So wherever you eyedrop this, it's gonna give us this value, well, not really that value, it's gonna give us the blue, green, the B, G, R, and the alpha value of that, um, which in our case, the alpha is gonna be like one or 255, I think is the actual alpha value. So you hit equals, and then you go to params again, and we're gonna need those uh, braces again. And remember with this params value here, we're just accessing from the render function wherever it's pulling this params from. So we're saying, hey, go into the parameters and grab something. And when it accesses params, we're going to tutorial, we need to see what we need to get. And in this case, we need tutorial color because again, that color function relates to this variable here. So we go to C++, add that in there. And then we're gonna hit dot. Again, we need a union, so we're gonna hit the U, and then we're gonna hit dot. And in this case, we need to kind of scroll down till we see something relating to color. So if I go to CD, this is a color definition. I know that's the one we need, but if I didn't know that, I would say that's probably the one we need. And if it didn't work, then we know it didn't work. So we're gonna stick with CD, because that is the one we need. And we're gonna hit dot value, because again, we need to get the value of whatever we selected, whatever color we selected. So now, um, this render function runs every time we move the timeline. So every time I, I move this, the render function is, is uh, accessed. So if I check this on, you might say, well, how does it know, if you don't move the timeline, how does it, it know that that is checked or not checked? Uh, it's only going to change this value if something changes. So if a, a, a parameter changes, so if I do this, the render function ran. If I do this, the render function ran. If I do this, the render function ran. So anytime something changes that should update this output, the render function will change and it will be activated. And in that case, it's going to grab the checkbox value. So is the checkbox on or off? And then it's going to grab that color number value. So what, what color is the picker at the moment? And those are all stored in these union uh, whatever the middle section is and then dot value. So now what do we do when we have that stuff? Well, right now we are setting this value here, the one we have external access to. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it in a second. But 
we're setting this color number value to whatever the color picker is on at the time and the checkbox whether it's on or off so when we go back to our C++ now we can go to a different function for instance uh, we're gonna need to go to uh, my simple gain func 8 click on that uh, this is gonna run anytime we're set with the mode is set to 8 color uh, 8 bit color and anytime the render function runs the second function is gonna run and the reason I know that's gonna happen if we go back to the render function for a second it's going to come down here and it's going to say, is the world deep? We're going to get in a little sidetracked here, so I'm going to blast through this, but I'll explain it later. Uh, is the world deep is asking, are we on 16-bit or 32-bit color? And since we're only dealing, for this tutorial, we're only going to deal with 8-bit color because I don't feel like writing some of these uh, functions out twice or two times. Um, it's going to say, no, it's not 16-bit because we are always going to be set to 8-bit color. And when we are it's going to run to this one and it's going to do this iterate suite two function whatever that does it actually goes pixel by pixel and ana analyzes things and then it, in that function every time it runs for every single pixel it's running another function called my simple gain func eight so when we go to that <clears throat> and we look at it you can see down here it's actually taking the pixel value so we have an x long that's for the x value a y long the longs are, are types of floats uh y y long it's taking that pixel value and it's saying, okay, so at the pixel 10 and 12, what color should it be? And it goes down here and it runs this thing and it says, if GIP, meaning if this exists, which it will because we made it exist, um, what color do we want the red value? What color do we want the green value? What color do we want the blue value? And what is the alpha? And so this is running for that float function. So you'll see they have a little bit of math already built into this, divided by 100. So that's basically taking the value of this number here, dividing it by 100, and then that's how it's coming up with the value that it should be for red, green, and blue. We are going to go up underneath that and type in it, an if statement. So if <clears throat> if what do we need? Uh, GIP. And again, this variable is coming from right here where we define. Well, Adobe defined it for us. And you can change this to whatever you want. You can name it something else, but just know if you change that name, you need to change it throughout the whole project. GIP dot um, we are going to want to see if the checkbox is clicked. So we need the checkbox value checkbox value equals one. So if it equals one, is it on? Then we're going to come right up here. We're going to take all of these uh, these values. I'm just copying this for now and then pasting it down here. And the reason I'm copying and pasting is just because it's easier than typing some of that stuff out. I don't need any of this stuff back here. So we can delete all of these. Delete that. Delete this. And delete this. So. If the checkbox is on, we want the whole screen to turn whatever color we have selected in here. So we need two things. We need the color value, and obviously we only do this when the checkbox is on because that's the whole point of the checkbox in this case. So if GIP.checkbox value equals one, meaning do we have the checkbox on, then let's go ahead and make the output for the red value equal to the GI capital P dot color num. Oh, oops, sorry dot color num dot red value so that is just going to go ahead and look into it's going to grab from here it's going to say hey what color is this on at the, at the moment what number do we have what is the value for the red let's make this output which output is referring to the pixel that it's currently on in this render let's make that whatever that red value is then we're going to go to gip dot color value again color num dot uh, this one's green, so we're going to go with green. Enter, and then finally, GIP dot color num dot. This one's going to go to um, blue value. Cool. And our alpha can just stay as what it is because, in our case, we're not dealing with alpha, so there is no opacity. So it's just going to be straight up whatever the maximum value is for alpha, and it's always going to be on that. Um, so now this thing says, hey, when this function gets called, if the checkbox equals one, then let's go ahead and fill the whole uh, render, the render viewer, so this area, with whatever color is in here. And it's not going to work yet because I'm going to need to close this and restart it. So in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Close this. Don't save. Mm -hmm. Come over here and run this. Whenever you run it, it automatically saves. That's why I didn't save that time. Description tutorials. Add this. Go to effects. Add my sick plugin. And then so now, if I check this box, we should get blue. And we do. And then I should be able to change this and we get whatever color I changed the thing to. So now you're actually making a custom plugin. You have officially coded a plugin.
congratulations. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial here. Uh, in the next one, we will add a button. And when you click the button, I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet, but um, we'll add a button and you'll see how to add the bunk button functionality. And we're actually going to make a new function. So from that, and if we go to solution, you'll see our new function pop up over here. And it's going to be really cool. So stick around for that. See you guys later.